Again, this is just so everyone um, is looking at the same thing, and you're not watching this tutorial, and are like, okay, mine looks different than yours, and that's weird. Now, the last thing I want to mention before we actually run this is this. Right now, whenever I'm teaching these tutorials, you see that we have minimal screen size, and that's just because I wanted to make the window small enough where um, people with smaller monitors can see the videos clearly. Well, the problem with this is the screen, whenever we're developing this app, it looks kind of small. So in order to get rid of this phone body, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the settings, and you see it says include device frame. I'm going to uncheck that. So again, if you ever like developing and looking at the phone itself, maybe it gives you a better idea of what the application is going to look like, then do that. However, just to make sure that these tutorials are a little bit more clear, I'm going to get rid of that, and then we're going to see the interface a little more clearly. So once we're ready to run our app and test everything out, this is what I want you to do. Go up to Tools and select Android AVD Manager. Now, if you don't want to go through all those steps, you can also click this little button right here. This is just a shortcut to the AVD Manager. And the AVD Manager stands for Android Virtual Device Manager. So this, let me make this a little bit more clear. All right. So this is where you manage all of your virtual devices. And again, a virtual device is just a little simulator, a little testing phone that you can make so you don't have to take an actual Android phone and plug it in your computer whenever you're developing apps and you want to test them out. So by default, whenever you download and install Android Studio, it comes with one virtual device. This is the Nexus 5. So that's what simulator phone comes built with it. But of course, if you ever want to make a new one, you just create virtual device by clicking that button down there. You can actually create, um, you know, little simulator TVs and whatnot. But I'll talk you guys through how to create a virtual device. I don't know. Maybe you want to create a same virtual device um, as the phone that you actually own. But for now, you can just use this one right here. Now, the reason that I'm not going to use this one and the reason that I built another one called Bucky's phone is something that you don't have to worry about. It's actually because whenever I'm recording these tutorials and I'm running this little simulator it takes up a lot of space and it doesn't really show that great on my uh, like whenever I'm making tutorials so that's why I made Bucky's phone it's pretty much the same thing except um, I made it a lot smaller so it shows up better in my tutorials but anyways what you want to do is you want to click this little green button great by Nexus 5 I'm gonna click mine called Bucky's phone and this is gonna launch as you can see right here the virtual device which is pretty much just a simulator of a phone now the first time you run this, it's going to take a long time to boot up because what it pretty much represents is you, you're buying a brand new phone so it has to start it up for the very first time. And the reason that this takes so long is if you think about it, what it's actually doing is it's building an entirely new operating system or an, an entirely new device within your computer. So it has to build a new phone with a new operating system that can run new apps. So that's why the entire build process in, you know, to get it up and running takes a little bit longer than you may like. So once your virtual device is up and running and yours may look a little different than mine because I did run mine before, but to you, it may simulate opening a brand new phone. So it's going to be like, welcome to Android. You're going to have to press OK, whatever. But anyways, you just click OK a bunch of times and then you're going to get to this screen right here. So this is the unlock screen and of course if you are used to an iPhone or something the unlocking process is a little bit different than it is in Android. So just click and drag up and that's going to unlock your phone. And as you can see it's just like a normal phone. You can even browse the internet from here. But what we are worried about is running our application. So let's hop over back to Android Studio and I'm just going to close out of this. but. What you want to do is you want to go up to this little button right here and whenever you hover over it it says run app so click that little green triangle and what this is going to do is it's going to build your app for you and it's actually going to give us one more option i believe yep right here so it says okay we're building your app where do you want to test it out so since we already have this emulator running right there make sure that your radio button is checked choose the running device and of course you're probably only going to have one running so you can just click OK. So what this is going to do is it's going to build it and it's going to launch it in our little simulator phone. So it takes a little bit of time but don't worry um, that's normal but eventually as you can see 
what happens is it finally launches and that's actually pretty cool that you don't have to actually go click on app and open it or anything it just launches right for you pretty sweet so we see that our application says my application hello world probably the coolest app ever invented we could probably put this on Google Play right now and make at least like 10 million dollars but of course what we want to do is actually jazz this up a little bit more before we put this bad boy for sale so that is the process of how to build a very simple app and test everything out again my guess is that since everyone's system is set up a little bit differently if things don't run completely smoothly for you or if you get any bugs or errors please go to my forum post your questions and there are a lot of people willing and actually wanting to answer your questions for you because whenever they answer someone's questions on the forum they actually get these things called points so um, you are encouraged to ask questions because they probably want questions to help you out with but anyways if you have any problems that's what you do thank you guys for watching in the next tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys something else that is definitely awesome so I'll see you then alright guys welcome back to another tutorial and in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a real quick overview of the interface because whenever I first started out with Android Studio, it was all kind of overwhelming and kind of confusing. It just made me feel uncomfortable not really knowing what any of this stuff was. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go through piece by piece and talk to you guys in detail what everything means. Instead, as we need the tools, that's what I'm going to be talking to you guys about. Okay, so this is, you know, the AVD manager and this is how you use it. So instead of overwhelming you guys, giving you, you know, the intricate details of what everything is, I just want to give you guys a real general overview to make you guys a little bit more comfortable with the inter interface. Blah, can't talk. All right, so of course, at the very top, this is simple up here. We have the menu bar. Pretty much all of our additional tools and settings is well as some you know very common stuff we can find in the menu bar nothing new there now under it we have a toolbar so all of these little icons this is actually called the toolbar right here now as we saw in the last tutorial what the toolbar is is basically shortcuts to more commonly used aspects of the program for example um maybe this sdk manager well we can also get there with tools android sdk manager but since we use that quite a bit that's why they put that in the toolbar. Now, if you ever want to customize your toolbar, I recommend just keeping it the same, but if you ever have a tool that you find yourself using a lot, you can actually right click in this empty area and click customize menus and toolbars, and then you can click the little programs that you either want to, you know, remove or add. Again, you click on them and all of your settings are right here to either add them or remove them from your toolbar. Pretty intuitive. So that's what that little chunk of this uh, Android Studio is. Now underneath this, this little thing right here that looks like a, I don't know, kind of a file directory explanation on um, like steroids or something, this is actually called the navigation bar. And basically what it is, is it shows the path to whatever current file you're working on. So this right here, the navigation bar, is pretty much the same as this thing up here. So it's pretty much a long file path. Now the cool thing about this is that, like I said, it is pretty much a file path on steroids because if you ever go to a directory, you can actually click on it and it's going to show you all the contents of that directory. So pretty sweet. And again, it's a file path to whatever current file you're working on. So if you change a file, this is going to change as well. Now this main area that I cannot ignore is the editor window. So the editor window is where we're going to be spending most of our time and it's pretty much the main area to show whatever file you are currently working on. So right now, um, we'll talk about this designer later on. It's pretty much, as you probably could have guessed, how you lay out all the widgets and stuff for your interface. Now, we're also going to be looking at this a lot, which is pretty much the text view of the file. Pretty much where we're going to be editing the source code and doing a bunch of cool stuff. But anyways, this main area shows whatever current file you're working on. You probably could have guessed that. Now over here, on the left hand side this is called the project window now whenever I am developing an app what I like to do is I like to change this drop down from Android to project so as you can see whenever you change it to project it's gonna list every directory in your entire project now one of the most important directories is called app now this is where all your source core source code and all your uh, like main layout files are so if you just want a real condensed view of all the important files then you can just hover down to Android and I'll actually keep that on Android for this tutorial 
but if you ever want an overview of your entire project again you can change that to project but just for these tutorials um, all the source code and stuff is in this Android drop down so I'll stick with that I, I don't know I think it'll be a little bit easier I guess alright so we pretty much covered this whole interface except for these things on the side these little bars that say like project structure all of that crap so first of all as you can see whenever I click it it toggles whatever window is on and off so this is the project window and I'm gonna click that it's gonna toggle that visible or I don't want to say it, it's invisible but you know visible invisible I'll say that whatever so if you ever feel that your entire interface it just looks kinda cluttered and you decide that you wanna hide all of these quick window bars then go down in the very bottom left corner and you're gonna see this little square gray icon this is the toggle either to show or hide all of these quick window bars so click that and they're all gonna be hidden click it again show them all hide show hide show can do it all day if you want so I'm gonna go ahead and click that again so it shows them all because that's the default now another thing I want to point out is if you hover over it it's gonna give you all of those quick windows so I don't know maybe you're on uh, I don't know maybe you're on the structure and you want to get the project again but you're too lazy to bring your mouse all the way back up there so you can just go this click project and it's gonna pop up for you again um, just two different ways of doing the same thing if you go to help and by the way so that was basically the quick two second overview of the interface of course there's a lot of other stuff but like I said I'm gonna be covering those as we need them as not to overwhelm you guys right now so what I'm gonna teach you guys right now are just little tips that I don't you you guys are probably gonna thank me for because they're just gonna make your experience developing apps a whole lot better first is if you go to help and you scroll down to default key map references let me actually minimize this although I don't think it'll matter what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a PDF of all of the keyboard shortcuts that you can use for the program so again of course I'm not gonna go over any of these right now because that would just be dumb and boring so instead what I recommend is actually printing this out laminating it and putting it on every single wall in your room because these are incredibly useful and you're gonna be using them a lot but actually for these tutorials I don't like to use keyboard shortcuts because if like a window pops up and then you guys just see my mouse in the same place you're like okay how the heck did you do that and I don't know it just gets confusing whenever I'm teaching but they will be useful to you now another thing that I want to show you guys that probably a lot of you guys are uh, itching to do is change the theme of your entire Android studio I know a lot of you like a dark theme so let me show you how to do that right now if you go to file settings and this was something else alright so file settings and if you go to appearance and then theme by default this is IntelliJ or whatever it is Windows one is pretty much um, a lighter theme but the fonts a little bit different in Darkula um, I don't want to change it because my screen recorder is probably gonna tweak out if I change the entire theme but right now I'm gonna keep this one because I love it Darkula is the dark one that you guys might be looking for Windows if you like really ugly stupid looking font then you can choose that too so of course after this you would just hit apply and then okay but I like mine so I'm just gonna can't actually while I'm in here I'll talk to you guys about a few more things all right so first of all actually let me back out of here so you guys can see what I'm talking what I'm about to teach you all right so first of all whenever we're working with a text file just go ahead and click any Java file to open up we're not gonna be talking about the source code right now but I'm gonna be showing you guys some useful things of how to actually work with it as you can see the gutter on the left hand side for some reason and I'm not sure why but every IDE and every text editor um, pretty much that I ever downloaded it doesn't show the line numbers by default I have no idea why they do that because I always love looking at the line numbers so to display the line numbers on this one it's actually really easy just right click anywhere in the gutter that's the gray area you click show line numbers pretty sweet check that out now another thing that I absolutely hate is this co code folding that's pretty much when you have a bunch of code like an entire body of a function or this right here and it bunches it up for you now the reason I hate this is because I love looking at all of the code and also for the tutorials if you guys are trying to copy the source code and you're like okay I need to know what he imported but oh that's great it's all bunched up it's really annoying even to me and I'm sure it's even more annoying to you so if you want to get rid of all of the code folding as it's called go to file and back in settings my 
is just make sure you guys see everything. And go to Col or excuse me, that's console folding. Go to editor under the IDE settings and code folding. And right here, this first checkbox is just to show the code folding outline. And that's that little arrow you can click to either bunch it up or expand it. But I, what I want to do is I want to uncheck all of these. So none of my code is going to be folded. Again, once I apply this, as you can see, my actual area that might um, that you guys can see may be a little bit bigger. But whenever you guys are trying to read my source code in the tutorials, then it's going to make it a whole lot easier. So again, I highly recommend putting the line numbers on by right-clicking, showing line numbers, and getting rid of code folding because I absolutely hate it. Personal preference, but you know, I've got to encourage you guys to do the same. So in the next couple tutorials, now that we are kind of more familiar with the interface, we can get into the good stuff, actually creating an app, the interface, and um, well, it's going to be awesome. So for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.